all right so in today's tutorial so we're looking at methods for generating random samples and we want to use the inverse transform method approach so in this example we want to use the inverse transform method to simulate 1000 random sample from the distribution with density function given below and this is um, basically an exponential distribution right with a rate of four right so how do we do this um, before we can simulate this density function we need to know the algorithm how it works so for the inverse transform method if the cdf is easy to compute then the, we, we derive the inverse function where the inverse is the cdf of the density function and u is coming from the uniform distribution right then write a command to compute the inverse function for each random variable required we generate a random u from the uniform distribution and deliver that x is equal to the inverse function how do we do this in r so here we are in r studio before we we start with algorithm let's look at the plot of the density function so you can use curve we had four times exponent minus four times x from zero to now right so let's look at let's run this so this is basically what you're going to simulate you're going to simulate from this density function let, let me zoom it So you're going to simulate from this density function and we have to ensure that our simulation resemble this um, curve that we have here. Right, so let's continue. So once we have this, um, according to the algorithm, we have to write a command to execute the, um, the, the inverse function. And we have the inverse function to be this, right? X equal to that. So this is the inverse function. You have to write a command to execute that. So let's do that. So um, see the code for inverse function. So I'm going to name this inverse f. That's the name of the f inverse function. I need only u as my input. So x is giving us minus um, 1 divided by 4 multiplied by log of 1 minus u right so x that is print print x right so let's see how this works let's run this um now let's see how it's gonna work if u is from is within 0 to 1 right so let me use let's say 8 0 0.84 let me run this so actually we are getting a result what if u is um, more than 1 let's say 1.1 let's run this okay so there's an error so actually you should always range between 0 and 1 right then we can get um, some positive results right all right so I think this is we are pretty well to go so once we have this we can set up set up the serial code for the inverse transform right so um, to be able to use the inverse transform we need to know the number of replications right here we have we'll be making use of 1000 replications so this is the number of replications and then we need let's say a sample size of 500 we can actually use 1000 as um, our sample size right but I prefer to use 500 so sample size 500 sample size then we need to get a container so that we can store the estimates for the um, 
for each run, right? We want to store the mean for the um, for each replicate. Basically, let's look at the mean for this um, the true mean, true dot mean for the exponential distribution is giving us one divided by the rate, right? So this is a true mean, true mean of density function. Right. And we know the stand true standard deviation um true standard deviation of the density function is giving us one square root of um, one divided by the rate squared, right? So we have um true standard deviation of density function so right so we can see the result true dot mean right which is 0 0.25 then you can also look at standard deviation right true um true standard deviation is equal to Okay, let's run this. Mm. So basically, they are the same. So um, if this is true, right, then it means that if you are to if you are doing the simulation, the estimates that you are going to get for each replication, the mean for for each replication, on average, it should be equal to the true mean. And the standard deviation to if we are to record the estimate for each replication, then on average the estimate for this for for the simulation should be equal to the true standard deviation, right? That's why we have this to ensure that we, we are actually satisfying the um, the central limit theorem. So um, we can create a container. I'm gonna call this mean estimates. So. I'm going to create an empty vector to store an empty vector to store mean estimate right for um to store let me write this let me copy this. So empty vector to store mean estimate for each run or replication. Then we do the same for standard deviation. And this just to ensure that um, we are satisfying this central limit theorem, right? So empty vector to store um, standard deviation estimate for each run as the standard deviation. So I'm going to make this as the estimates right so let's run this All right control enter to run control enter to run control enter to run All right so i think this we are pretty well to start with the simulation we are going to use a for loop to get our work done so for index i in one two n um from the algorithm, we have to generate a random u from what the uniform distribution. So u should come from the uniform distribution. The sample size is n, and the minimum is zero. The maximum is one. Right. Once we have this, we can get a simulated values symbol. We are going to use the inverse function to get that inverse function u so this is basically going to give us the simulated values for each replication we are going to get a simulation with this inverse function and then we want to store the mean of each replication inside this container so we have mean of sim dot val 
then we can also store the standard deviation if you want to but you can skip this part and um, what normally matters is the mean right but i just want to add this sd estimate so this is to store the standard deviation um of the simulated values right later we'll compare it to we have to we'll compare it to and realize that the on average the estimate from this on average will be equal to the standard deviation that you have already specified and on average the mean will also be equal to the um, population mean that we have specified right so um, I think we are pretty well to run this let me run this for a loop so I'm gonna run this all right so from here I think we can look at the histogram of our simulation yeah to see if it mimics um what we have here right it, it should mimic this it should mimic what we have here so i'm gonna create simulated values um probability true i want the density function so i'm using probability true t for true and then m class number of classes should be equal to 30 it's okay we can also set the main that is we want the heading for the plot to be histogram of simulated values or histogram of um, simula simulation right so it's histogram of simulation it's okay then um let's let me add some color to it so color should be green so okay so let's see um let's see how this works okay so see it resembles um the this function that we actually the curve that we, we initially plotted so I'll, i'm going to draw the density in this so that we have a clear picture of what we are doing so i'm gonna set sequence from zero right to let's say 1.5 it's okay right then the separation should be 0 0.01 by one percent right so let me run this draw my lines density line so i need y then i'm going to use a density function which is 4 multiplied by exponent minus 4 times y right i'm going i need a color for this let's make this blue then the line width should be 2 right let's run this so right so so see it's it's mimic the simulation that we have created or we have we have is mimicking the density function that we initially plotted so we have actually simulated from this density function right so you can basically look at the mean for the estimates the mean estimate for the simulation i'm going to call this um, mean dot sim so the mean for all the simulation mean estimates right so for each um, replication or each experiment or each run it stores the mean so i want to look on average how would the mean um how, what ought to be the value for the mean and by the central limit term the mean for this should be equal to the population mean which is the mean that we initially specified right that's the true mean 
that we have here. So let's look at it. So this is the mean for the simulation, the mean for the estimate that we recorded for each replication. Let's run this. So let's look at it. Mean the same. Right. So you see this is getting closer to 0 0.25, the true mean. Let me combine it to C bind. True mean. True dot mean. And the mean from the simulation, right? The mean of the means for the simulation, right? Let's combine the two. Let me run this. So you see the true mean is 0 0.25, and the mean for the um, the mean for the simulations, right, is approximately equal to the true mean. So this is basically satisfying the central limit theorem. You can also look at the standard um, deviation. So I'm going to call this SD the same. So the mean of the standard deviations as the estimates should be equal to the standard deviation we, we, we specify. That is the true standard deviation. So let's combine the two C bind the true standard deviation and the standard deviation from the simulation should be approximately equal. So I'm going to run this. All right. So you see it's also getting closer. So this is got to ensure that you're actually satisfying the central limit and you're on the right path, right? So this is basically how to um, use the inverse transform method in R 